Welcome to the Once Upon an Island podcast. I'm your host, Wesley, and of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Mary. And today, we're talking about The Amazing Race 33 premiere, which was actually two episodes back-to-back. It was a two-hour premiere, which I liked. Mary, one to ten, what was your hype level going into this season? It was probably like an eight or nine. I was super excited to be able to watch Amazing Race again live on TV. It'd been so long, so I was really excited for tonight's episode. Yeah, and I was I, also excited that it was a double episode. I was more excited it was a double episode because just one episode of the... I feel like every time a show premieres, whether it's Survivor, Amazing Race, or whatever, I want a longer premiere. I want more time to get to know people and more time to see things. And then after that, we do our normal one-hour episodes because next week, I looked it up, it's, it's a one-hour episode. But I like that they did a two-hour premiere tonight, especially since the whole thing took place in London. Yeah. It kind of felt fitting. It, it did, and it wasn't... Like, I always forget, not I always forget how many teams there are, but it can be really confusing at the beginning when there's so many teams and you're trying to remember who's there's that. There's always who's 11 that? teams, I think. Well, I'm sure there is. I'm just saying, like, it's, it, it feel like I, I, whenever I think about Amazing Race, yeah. I'm usually thinking about, like, the last couple of legs or, like, mm-hmm. a really cool challenge or so-and-so or so-and-so, you know, like, specific people pop out in my mind. But there, there are just so many people in the first episode and it's just nice to be able to get like you said get to know some personalities and get to put some names to faces especially with this one because there was a lot of quote-unquote i want to say celebrity even though i don't know all of they them. have like backstories but that are like amazing. yeah they all had like amazing backstories or they're really important people or whatever and so that amazing helped a little 33, bit too amazing backstories yeah <laughs> i kind of felt the same not like they're celebrities i mean there's a couple in here i guess you'd call quote unquote celebrities because they have like a YouTube channel with 700,000 subscribers. I don't know if that counts as celebrity. That's the Holderness family. Uh, some of you may know who that is. And then of course the two guys, Anthony and Spencer, who I think stopped, it was like, would they stop like a terrorist attack in France in mm-hmm. 2015 on a train? And then they had a movie made about them called 1517 to Paris. Uh, I guess they answered my question about what country it was in. <laughs> and yeah, so that was like probably the celebrities of this episode, but everyone else was just had very interesting. Well, there was also the couple from Love Island. I mean, again, not necessarily celebrities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I mean, for CBS, Love Island is a show that's on it, so it's a crossover star. I don't know if right. they, I don't know if they were, I've never watched Love Island, so I don't even know if Carol and Ray were big on Love Island. If any of no you idea. watch that show, please comment, let me know, because I, I have no idea. Um, yeah, I mean, here we are. We were debating, you know, there's so many shows happening in between the next season of Survivor, between 41 and 42. We got this. We got Celebrity Big Brother 3, which is rumored to have Boston Rob on it. Uh, if he is on it, we'll actually watch <laughs> Celebrity Big Brother. Uh, and <laughs> as, as far as he gets on it, I mean, we'll see if we decide to watch the rest of it after that. Thankfully, it's like those seasons are like three weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got Australian Survivor premiering at the end of January with Sandra in it. And I sure hope they put that on Paramount Plus because I want to see Sandra be Sandra, I guess. <laughs> I mean, in Australian Survivor, like, can she understand their accents? Can they understand her accent? I don't it's know. It's not that difficult. Well, I mean, the only other time we've seen somebody who's an American on Australian Survivor was Russell. And that went very poorly. So... <laughs> Sandra can outlast Russell. Hey, Queen stays Queen. Anyways, we're not here talking about Australian Survivor. I'm just saying there's so many things to like think about. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the episode as it happened. Of course, from uh, front to back, we'll be telling you who we think is going to go next, who who the losers are going to be, and who will also give you our winner predictions. It's not like Survivor where there's like a winner edit necessarily. It's more of predictions based on how people are performing. Whether luck, whether even if they have bad luck, whether they can get through bad luck, stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. really what's key in the Amazing Race. Do they know how to drive a stick shift? We don't know that answer yet. Um, though <laughs> Find Phil, out next week, apparently. Phil tweeted today, to the day we're podcasting that, he said, he said, I told them on their 19-month break to learn how to drive a stick shift. Do you think they listened <laughs> to me? So I guess that answer, we'll find that out in like four or five or whatever, whether people actually learn how to drive a stick shift with all that time. By the way, for those who are new to the amazing race driving six shifts, like learning how to make fire on survivor. Like you just learn how to do it before you get on the show. Yeah. Yeah. You don't figure it out on the show. So anyways. Okay. So I do have a very mild rumor about the season before we talk about the episode. Uh, I already told you it Mary, but for those listening, skip ahead 20 seconds. Okay. You've been warned (laughs) the whole, (laughs) apparently the whole race is going to take place in Europe because they're all COVID safe countries. 
Not that I don't think initially it was supposed to be all be in, in Europe, but it's going to be all in Europe. I'm sure. So just want to throw that out there. It'll be Amazing Race Euro edition. Very interesting. But very interesting. There are plenty of places in Europe to go. Okay. So right away we see Phil Kogan talking to us and he's like, three of the legs of this season were shot in 2020 before COVID happened, before COVID out was an outbreak. Um, now, I know you and I talked about this since we learned that they were shooting and then they had to stop Mm -hmm. of were they going to do were they just going to show the three legs and then reconvene all the teams and shoot the rest of the legs or were they going to just redo the whole race Mm -hmm. and so what did you think about this decision to do to keep the three that they already did and then have a break i think it's going to be interesting well first of all it's just that's the most fair option i think like can you imagine going on the race for three legs and then being like, sorry, it's canceled and we don't know when it's going to happen again, you know? And then years later, Year somebody later. else gets to do it and you did it, you know? Well, so I, th- I think, I think more what I'm saying is like they could get all the teams back that they could get back. And if somebody couldn't do it, they would replace them. And that's why they would redo the, the, the season. Though I guess they got all the teams back. That's well, why yeah, they got, to, they got everyone. To everyone who be, was not eliminated. Yeah. They got, well, hopefully we're assuming they get everyone back because yeah. that would be weird if they didn't. But, um, no, I thought like, it's just so hard. <clears throat> excuse me. Just so hard to say like, well, this could have happened or this could, cause you mm-hmm. know, COVID happened. And so they did the best that they could. And we'll find out a little bit more in, in next week's episode. Yeah. Cause that's where they bring it up. But I'm I w- I'm glad that everyone who signed on was able to finish is all. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that this that will this will it will make first off, it'll make this season very memorable. I think the last season 32 was memorable because an alliance ruined the whole race. And then the season before that was like they had a crossover starts. They had Big Brother, uh, Survivor, Amazing Race people all doing a race together. But 30, like I do not remember what 30 was. Mm-hmm. I remember the 30 happened and we watched it and that's about it. I remember 29 was all strangers. So I'm saying that like, it's cool. Like, okay, here's another memorable season. Even if it's not for a reason they were going to, to going have for, it be memorable. Right. They weren't planning on a pandemic, but we do see like this race starts. And they're all at their house, which I thought was. I thought a, that was really weird. Yeah. Weird choice. <laughs> I assume when I saw the previews that this was the COVID, yeah. you know, edition where they're not all meeting together or something. Before this episode started, I still had no idea that they were re- just going to use the three legs that they already shot. Mm-hmm. Like when the episode starts, when I found that out. And so their phones say February 22nd. Um, I caught that. So that's, I mean, I don't know how much time it took to do three legs, but maybe COVID outbreak was sooner in Europe. Cause I know here in America, it wasn't until like, the second week of March, it was considered a an outbreak. Yeah, it was. We were a little slower, I guess. Yeah. Than Europe. <laughs> Which I don't know that that does seem about the right timeline, though, for a couple mm-hmm. of weeks right before. Mm-hmm. Sure, and each leg probably takes two to maybe three days, depending on if they have to travel. Though these two legs happening in London probably only took two three days mm-hmm. together. Um, but yeah. So, but they're traveling to Scotland next. They did say. Yeah. So I don't know how long it takes to travel Scotland from England <laughs> without looking it up, but not long I'm sure all. not long at all. Yeah. yeah. We did look this up. Remember did we? when we were thinking. Oh about yeah. Mary, Mary and I were <laughs> thinking about going to England and then COVID happened. So we could have been was, there. It was right around the same we time. We could have been there yeah, at the that same time. Cool. Be like, hi, Phil. Hi, I'm in Scotland, Phil. I just remember Phil. from London to Glasgow, it was like a seven hour train ride or something like I, that. I love how the show, though, pretends like it's a race to their local airport to fly to England. Like the team that's in Buffalo, New York is going to be the team in Los Angeles. You guys are all just starting at the same time. It's just yeah. in Europe instead of in yeah. America. I Yeah. Again, I don't. That was weird to me and I didn't really like it. I'm not sure why they it did it. It was a weird decision. Yeah. It, there was no explanation like the half of the high it was cool seeing their families i mm-hmm. think like that was one positive about it is you it was got very brief very briefly saw their families and have them say goodbye um but yeah like the whole beginning of amazing race all the teams are gathered together in a big open space and phil's phil like, does his eyebrow movement right and then you know he says go and they all run and like this time, the first time you see all the teams together, they're running around like this little barrier in the airport. And you're yeah. just like, this is not as cool at all. No, no, but. no. Definitely one of the weakest starts to any le- any season, but not not a weak season so far, just a weak start. I will say that uh, 
with them all starting up their homes. Okay, so that that was like a weird creative decision. They've made there's definitely some creative decisions for those who have been watching the Amazing Race for at least a few seasons mm-hmm. that you'll notice. Like one, the graphics of the detours, roadblocks, and like pit stops and stuff have all changed. And I think personally, they've changed for the worse. They're mm-hmm. way more generic now. They feel kind of lazy in comparison. Like the older ones, like there was a unique look to them. Right. And like they used it for 32 seasons and no one said a word because they were good. <laughs> and now they've like made them like very generic. And I thought that was weird. But on the flip side, I really like the new confessional shots, like the way they're shooting them. Like they're mm-hmm. not like their typical close up on people like shoulders up or like, it, I don't know, like very generic looking shots. Now they're like in locations and they like take advantage of the perspective of mm-hmm. the location. And I do well, like that. It used to be that they almost always did confessionals at the end of the leg. So you kind of saw where they were ending. Yeah. Or somewhere in that area. And they were all at the same exact spot. Well, I except mean, for the ones the at the Natural part. History Museum. I'm talking about past seasons. Oh, past seasons. What yeah. they would used to do yeah, is yeah, do yeah. the confessional at the pit stop. Everyone had the same angle, the same background. Basically. Basically. Yeah. Like with a few variations. Versus this one, they're doing like, I'm sure, they could have all been at the Natural History Museum or whatever. But it was different locations, with different angles. Yeah. It was it was very, it was much more cinematic. Yes. No, I liked it. I liked the choice. We don't have to be so, like, I don't need to see every detail on their face uh, to, <laughs> for me to like the confessionals. No, I think they, uh, that was one creative choice I thought was good. Um but the graphic choice was. I have noticed the color grading of Amazing Race some so sometime in the past three or four seasons shifted. It used to be more colorful, and now it's become I don't know what the look is called. Not I don't know more natural is the word. Maybe uh, some of you out there will have an opinion on that. But it used to have more color, and now I feel like it's more drab's not the right word, but it definitely has muted. less color. Muted, yeah, muted's the right word. That's the word I'm looking for. Muted. So that was, uh, just some creative choices, notice, but that's all. Most that's, of the leg was also at night. So the muted stuff is, though was I noticed in thirty two as well. We just didn't podcast about thirty two, so I had no one to gotcha. say that too at the and time. And if you said it, I forgot. <laughs> if I said to you, you would have forgotten. Yeah. So they're all going to London, and we get some backstories from them. Now I did not write the backstory to every team. I'm sure every team got to tell us a backstory. It was probably team number four or five. I was like, oh, yeah, I probably should write these down. Mm-hmm. So we're, I'm just bringing up the ones I, that I wrote down when we watched it. But I I want to say that the backstories in comparison to the sob stories of Survivor, the backstories of Amazing Race are better. This is the better way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, this is actually kind of cool. Yeah, we get a backstory from people. It doesn't feel it feels like we did this like we did this thing. This is the thing we did. And. You know, it's not like cry for me. It's not sad music, emotional music. Oh, man, I was fat in middle school and then went to high school mm-hmm. and ran track and became one of the best of all time. It's so sad. With the <laughs> with the special lighting effects yeah. and beautiful music. Now, it was just like, this happened. Yep. And okay, cool. Yeah, like, uh, I don't have their names top of my head, but let me double check. It was There was one team that, uh, let me pull it up because I don't want to butcher this. Akbar and Sherry, I think. Mm-hmm. I could be saying that wrong, but Akron Cherry, where they were like working, they worked at West Side High School, or he actually attended West Side High School. Did he? Uh, yeah, I think he said he attended there and it really sucked. And now they work and they're, uh, don't quote me on all this, but I don't know, now they ba- he basically works there, or they both work there. And they've really, they made an after school program that runs from 6 to 11 that really has brought down violence. And in fact, they've said they had no. They haven't lost a student this year to gun violence. There you go. And that school, would mean yeah. this year mean like 2019, 2020. Right. So, I, you know, that's another thing that's going to be interesting is it, will we get updated backstories a year and a half later? Yeah, I hope so. On episode In episode four. So um, another backstory is 1517 to Paris is what I wrote down. Basically, the guys we mentioned that stopped the the bomb or the bombing on the train or the terrorist, the terrorist attack on the attack. train in France. Know. Yeah. Yeah, and then they had a movie made about them. At the end of the leg, they're like, oh, yeah, people think because we were in a movie, we got money, but we didn't. And I'm like, you done screwed up. You didn't get any money. (laughs) You starred in the movie. The movie was about you. (laughs) If you didn't get any money from that, you guys did not each get a million at least because that movie had 30 million budget. If you guys did not each get a million each, you you screwed up because you starred in the movie and it's about you. How did you sell your rights for nothing? Anyways, um, Anthony and Spencer were okay, like personalities, like. I feel like we didn't really get to know them outside of that. 
Yeah, backstory. that was basically all they had. They sh- he showed like the knife wounds in the back of his That's neck. That's true. And that stuff. was pretty crazy. Well, but and he did five say, years later they're still there. I think he he did say you know something like I guess a little bit more personal, but personal personal about him personable (laughs) no personal Uh, man i can't say it about him something a little more insight into his personality is what i'm trying to say is that he mentioned you know once you come face to face with death it's like the whole rest of your life is kind of kind of like a gift you just really appreciate it more and so he said that experience changed him for the better because now he is just like looking for ways to enjoy life kind of kind of thing and so which is why he's on the amazing race i feel like that's something we've seen with other people too like ethan in winners of war for example is like the same way like i survived cancer like twice like this is all a gift at this Mm -hmm. point it's like it's like it's like uh what's that called it's like finding money in your jacket pocket it's like free money even (laughs) though it's really your money it was always your money (laughs) but it's kind of like oh i feel like this is free money i didn't know i had this money yeah so it's like i didn't know i had this time mm-hmm. or i didn't know what this time was worth and i think that's a life, life lesson for all of us you yeah. know because i don't want to i don't want to have to go through a near-death experience to no. think about this <laughs> my life as as you know a gift. something worth yeah a gift like not so but that does lead into our next team which is ryan and dusty mm-hmm. uh who spent a decade in oh, i'm sorry one of them spent a decade in prison and i think it was ryan it was one of the it was one of the team. right Spent a decade in prison for being wrongfully accused for a murder. Is yeah. that right? Was it mm-hmm. murder? It was murder. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> at a young age too. Yeah. Because they don't look they don't look at old at all in this race. Well, he said uh, something about his exams, like midterm exams. So I'm like, I think maybe he was a. That's freshman right. He thought he'd be out of out of jail in time for midterms. Right. So he's probably in high school at the time. I'm gonna look up how old they they are, but that was just like that was also he said something similar. Also, you know what about how that whole experience in prison changed his life because now he just wants to enjoy life to the fullest extent. And we were talking They're 37 about 37 and 38 years old. Oh, well they look younger than so, that. Well, they could have been, he would have been in prison. He could have been out of prison for 10 years now too. Sure. Yeah. I he, think he was in college, but anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So he might've been in prison for like the last like mm-hmm. five, six years. Point is that the, this team, just like Anthony Spencer are definitely, totally all in on enjoying enjoying well life. yeah and he mentioned like since i've been out of prison i visited london a few times so i kind of know my way around or something so yeah. that just goes to show you that yeah he's not he's not joking about you know enjoying life or traveling or having fun if it wasn't for covid mary and i would be traveling there too <laughs> we want to go We want to. so when they started this leg there was like oh i want to go to london <laughs> i also want to go to france i just want to do france. a euro trip okay yeah with mary one day one day, one day. All right. Um, the next team I have is the flight attendants. They called themselves the hot flight attendants. No, ca- the Holderness, the Holderness mom called them the hot flight attendants. Oh, and she? then they said, actually, we're more like the hot mess flight attendants. I would agree but with um, actually their, their uh, description, the hot mess flight attendants were Kel and Kayla. Um, I really don't have much on them except that they that I think that they they did pretty well both legs. They first off, one of them had just been in London two weeks before being there for the race. Yeah, because she's a flight attendant, and I'm like, you know what? If we've had flight attendants in the past, I don't recall if they had an advantage. But if you've been to any of the locations we're going to go to, and since they're going to be all in Europe, I know I've now I'm saying the smile spoiler over and over, but whatever. Um, all the legs are going to be in Europe. Like that would be an advantage if you've been to these places. We there. I distinctly remember a season where there was a flight attendant, and she said that exact same thing. I've been a yeah. flight attendant. I'm, but she like was overconfident, and they messed up a lot. And I don't remember. Yeah. I know they didn't win. Yeah, because she messed up on other areas. Like, sure, her travel was good, but you can't just be good at the travel part. Yeah, because there's still tasks to do. You still have to stay cool under pressure. You still have to read your clue and drive a stick shift. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see if uh, those things come up, driving a stick shift, really. Uh, we then have the football coach and his wife, Connie and Sam. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I thought they were goners after the first leg. I mean, I really yeah, did. I thought they, they were, were, they were very doing last bad. Because of a bad taxi driver, they I had think. A bad, but, but they picked it up. I mm-hmm. mean... I don't really have much to say about them, but they did. Uh, they said they adopt, not, not adopted, but they basically had a kid who really didn't have a family live mm-hmm. with them until he graduated and went to graduate high school, went to West Point. Yeah. He's so West Point. it was kind of like a success. Yeah, it was story. a really cool story. And that's mm-hmm. what we mean. Like the backstories were like, cool. And like, I forgot to mention that uh, Akbar. No, no, I mentioned them. Okay. Yeah. Like they're, they're West Side 
high school is like a success story. Like mm-hmm. if Survivor wanted to change from sob stories to success stories. Yeah. Please, please. <laughs> like I, you don't have to make me cry. Just like, give me something. Give me a reason to root for them. You can like, cry I want, happy tears. Yeah. I don't want to cry for all 20 people I on the island. I teared up a little bit on the success stories. Oh, did you? Yeah. Just the adopting one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mary, Mary is a sucker for children. She wants to adopt them all. Yeah. All of them. All right. Then we have Arun and Natalia, a father and son team. Uh, a basically, father and daughter team? Father and daughter. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said father and son. Father and daughter team. Uh, they said they're living the American dream basically because he moved here and he w- like worked at a, oh, he said he worked at a he ga- was, fast food restaurant. Yeah. He was like a cashier or something. Yeah. He started out really low and now he's co I'm almost surprised he didn't say it was a cliche that he was a cashier. But he did work at fast food, not a gas station. Because he says oh they're living goodness. the Indian American. No, that's what he said. <laughs> the Indian American dream. Like I was like, oh, I was like sitting there waiting for him to say it because it felt like he was like going to say it. And maybe he did and they cut it out. But yeah. And then Natalia, like she's he says she's doing something. She's in college or she's really she's like super smart. She's like 20 awards so she can't be in and has a good job. I think that's yeah. all, all he said. OK. And then they seem, especially at the end of leg one, where he's like, these teams are more in shape, but Phil's like, ah, but you got the brain. Mm-hmm. Phil's always there to encourage yeah, you. Yeah, he is. It doesn't feel weird and awkward like some other host. <laughs> All right. Then we have the radio twins, Lulu and Lala. Now, I'll say this team's a hot mess. Yes. A very hot mess. <laughs> they're both 37. Uh, they're twins. They, they're, are they married and they live with each other still? Is that what, it, what they no. are for was? I'm so confused. No, they still live with each other. Yeah, they're not married. But they're not married. Oh my no, goodness. I don't remember the fight they had about the girl's ex-boyfriend. Oh, or whatever. I forgot. Yeah, that's yeah. in like leg two. We'll talk about when they we get there. They work together. They're co-radio hosts. Yeah, they together. both work for iHeartRadio as Is hosts. iHeartRadio. That's what it said. Yeah. Okay. On, on I, I was looking at the Masonry's wiki. So if it changes between us uh, recording this and you all looking it up know that i probably am just winging it <laughs> <laughs> but if i recall it was i i heart radio yeah so they're radio hosts they work together they have a show together they live together they're like the epitome of identical twins finished each other's sentences all the same time. hairstyle same clothes same, well everyone wears same similar clothes on the team but i'm sure even outside the race they probably wear but this is like an amazing race staple to have the twins yeah yeah at this point i think it is for sure. Like, I always feel like we They're have fun. a fun. I like them, but... <laughs> they are a hot mess, though. <laughs> like, like you did not know it until the race started. Um, the next couple we have is Caro and Ray from the show Love Island. Never seen the show. Don't care to watch the show. So if anyone know, saw them on Love Island could tell us anything about them, that'd be great. About how they were on the show, I mean. Um, do you think they're still together in 2021? Because this was February, March 2020, and they're together, but... It's a year and a half later. We'll find out, I guess. It's a year and a half later. Do you think they're like? Do you think they're still together romantically? I don't know. Well, I know we'll find out, and I don't want to look it up on Instagram or whatever. Like, stalk their profiles. They seem to be fairly newly. I mean, they said they dated seven months, but they live across the country. Love Island probably just happened in the summer before. Right, and so I I don't know. In the very first episode, they had one stressful situation, and they handled it fine. I guess you know I've seen it handled much worse by married mm-hmm. couples so i don't know who knows maybe yeah uh but it's it's true that you say when they're long distance like they're basically cross country from each other like how can you i almost feel like is this relationship just a put on to get on the show because there has been in the past teams who pretend to still be in the relationship they were in to get on the amazing race like they applied they were in a relationship oh. And then they got on the race, but they were no longer in a relationship. So they pretended like they were. Hmm. Uh, then it, the race will never tell you that because they, because that's just a lot of drama that uh, the teams are dealing with. But yeah. So I wonder if they'll still be together or if they're even really together in the first place. You are more cynical than I am. Well, I'm just I, like, of course they're dating. Of course they're going to be together. Oh, yeah. They're probably going to be married and have 10 kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So then we have Kim and Penn, a.k.a. the Holderness family. You may have seen them on YouTube. They have like 700,000 subs. So I, as soon as they came on screen, I was like, I know them. I recognize them. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh yeah, it's the Holderness family people. 
the one, the one video I know them the most for is their rendition of baby. It's cold outside where she's like, maybe I should stay. And he's like, no, please go. <laughs> she's like, there's something in this drink. No, it's just Sprite. <laughs> he's like, please don't get me in trouble. <laughs> so if you haven't seen them at all ever, I highly recommend looking up that video. They're pretty uh, Not closing this video to look it up. Just look it up separately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, they, it's like baby. Just look up Poldry and his family. Baby, it's cold outside. It's my favorite one of theirs. Okay. Uh, then we have the Taylor and Isaiah. Uh, they they're famous for a flash mob dance and i watch a lot of videos online i've never seen this flash mob dance so well, maybe it's popular in it circles was probably a flash in the pan oh <laughs> no i mean for real though like i am usually pretty keen on what the popular videos are there's I say millions of man. videos out there <laughs> That's like true how are you supposed to know all how them? am i supposed to know everyone but i feel like a flash mob dance would be something that would be shared on like facebook and stuff sure like you know who knows like it, when it was though like, it's not like a video about minecraft this was already two years ago that's true this would have been at least 2019 they would have done this dance so you're right like even if i saw it would i remember it here two years later <laughs> yeah i yeah, don't i don't know okay so we have them and all right so that's all the teams i wrote down the backstories for i'm sorry if i missed a team it's not because i hate them or something it's just because i didn't start writing notes until i think west side high school showed up and i was like oh yeah i should probably start taking notes so anyways all right their first task is to go to london and take a taxi by the way these taxis are super nice it's definitely the nicest taxis i've ever seen in any country even here in america i'm just gonna say the only team that you missed that i can yeah. see was michael and mo which were the police officers That's that true. had a viral little video of them singing or something yeah yeah the singing police officers so that counts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, I did a good job. Yeah, I nailed yeah, all eleven then. All if them. you add them, yeah. Good job. Wow. I mean, I'm. Anyways, I'm, yes, they yeah. start in London, but we've talked about the black taxis of England before. They've been featured on another amazing race. Yeah, because there was one amazing race where they had to be in a taxi. They had to memorize this route mm -hmm. and tell the driver where to go. Um, and Let's not confuse people. That's sorry. not what they're doing this time. I'm just <laughs> saying that the Amazing Race likes the black taxis. I like London. the black <laughs> taxis like the of, 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 of England as well because <laughs> especially these cool. ones here in London. Yeah, like if, if we go, we need to take one of these just because they're so they look so nice. And, and apparently, the drive the test to be a driver is like one of the hardest tests you could ever take because they have to have every street in London memorized. All I got to say is ever since 1776, England's really stepped up their game. Okay. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that, it was literally, that was the turning point. Nothing before <laughs> that. Okay. So they got to find a guy dressed up like a telephone booth. Mm -hmm. Probably because there are no telephone booths anymore. I'm just, I could be. No, they still, I, you think they're still they there? They still are there for attraction. For purposes. picture purposes. I don't know if they actually work, but. Yeah. So they got to find a guy dressed like a telephone booth. Somebody who um, lives in London can tell us. Oh, yeah, yeah. If anyone is, that would be cool if there's somebody listening from London. Uh, also, can you sneak us into the country <laughs> <laughs> without having like quarantine or anything? I just want to like <laughs> sneak in, you know, hang out, see some things. We want to, never mind, go on. <laughs> we want to maybe get arrested by some bobbies. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they find telephone booth, man. It's, it's, it's only a hard task because there's like, not every person ha all, every person only has like two or three clues each mm -hmm. so it's it's a task it's a yeah, thing it's they just do like, it's just a first fun task it's, it's just, not it is not at all difficult it's like to get the teams there get their feet wet uh but then they have to go to buckingham palace for their detour well their d if they want to do the art detour isn't that right or am i wrong no so there's two detours the yeah. art detour and then time the, travel is what it's called did you been detour break the hourglass yeah. No, it was so. Uh, if you picked the though. Digibin one, you had to go to Buck, walk to Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Find the Bobby there, get a clue from him, walk to I forget the other street or area. Get yeah, they don't go in Buckingham Palace. No, they just walk by it. Yeah. Find a clue from another person, walk to another area where you find the DJ guy, get a clue from him, and then your detour is done. Uh, but the artist one, you had to just walk to this artist studio nearby. Uh -huh. And basically put together a puzzle on the floor and then paste it to the wall. But, but some not, teams didn't know about the puzzle part. Right. Because they were just pasting it to the wall. They thinking, don't oh, necessarily. It's art, so it can be a mess. Yeah. They didn't. When they walk in, they don't say, here's a puzzle for you to do. Yeah. They just say, hey, put the put, put the papers up on the wall. Here's how you do it. And quickly, some teams figured it out right away. Oh, wait, this is this looks like a puzzle. They didn't even get it up on the wall. They just start arranging it on the floor. But unfortunately, other teams just 
plastered it on the wall any which unfortunately way they for them to. but fortunately for us <laughs> right it was pretty funny yeah the amazing race knows that some team was bound to screw this up and in fact every task some team's bound mm-hmm. to screw it up so that was the biggest hiccup for the artist side detour i think the biggest hiccup for the other detour was just that people didn't know what a bobby was which i don't know i thought was obvious like who doesn't know that a bobby is a policeman i didn't but know that before we watched the show now i know many people do not and I, this one the one team was what was it um the ones you thought were not doing well at all at the be okay, raquel is it raquel and kayla no that's the twins. no anyways Come one Kayla team that was like in the in the back because they didn't get a good driver apparently who took the wrong wrong way which is just a shock yeah. you know but anyway how just, well trained you just said they were i know anyways he just said that he was just walking around yelling bobby and his wife is bobby. like <laughs> his wife was like it's not a person named bobby it says the bobby and but of course the I bobby think it's answers someone named it. bobby as well yeah, but it's the Bobby. Well, now I know. Now no one I says, know. go find the Wesley. Yeah. No, it says, go find a Bobby. Not no, the it Bobby. says the Bobby. Go find the Bobby at whatever, whatever. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I think it said a Bobby, which is actually a bigger indicator that it's not just a person. It's a, uh, it's something Anyways, called Bobby. It was an interesting Anyways, first detour. Everyone let me know how right Mary is and how wrong I am. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Akbar and Sherry. Sherry's like struggling here oh, so yeah. this is a team that if they survive through three legs i hope that sherry's like i need to get in more shape because now i've learned how hard this race is because i mean you just don't know i think sometimes till you're on the show like survivor amazing race whatever mm-hmm. big brother's easy the, <laughs> the other two though like you got to be in some physical shape for some of these things and she's struggling she's, she's like ah slow and steady wins the race and he's like no no <laughs> slow and say do not win the race it's losing steady yeah or something like that, that something point. like that he is so annoyed at, at her but for like because he's like because he looks in better shape mm-hmm. um and he's able to walk like the speed she's jogging so mm-hmm. i get it i would be the jogging sherry that'd be me i'd be that like that would be me too ah, slow and steady win the race <laughs> no i probably would be the i would probably be the the husband and be like come on wesley i don't know. pick it up we're gonna lose yeah you probably would have more mental determination but i don't think i'm in like that much better shape than no. sherry here i'd be doing the same thing i'd be like slow and steady win. can we get a taxi <laughs> do we have money for a taxi um so then they uh so basically after they do their detour which, by the way, so I wanted to throw this out there. I meant to mention it earlier, but let's just do it now because it, now it's coming up. If you and I were a team on this race, mm-hmm. let's do this for the entire season. What task would we choose? And then on roadblocks, we'll decide who would do the roadblock. Um, so for the detour, without knowing how it actually turned out for teams, if we just saw, were presented with this, what, which one would we have done? The art or the time travel digi-ben? I, I think I would probably initially want to go with the digibin just because walking around finding clues sounds easier but at the same time it is at night and it's in a city we don't know so i probably would have done the art one as well yeah i think i'm i would agree with you if i was there and i was just like in the moment having to make a decision i'd pick mm-hmm. the art one because i personally don't like having to travel without like some sort of map or something mm-hmm. and I'm, they don't have like cell phones with the gps right so uh, yeah i'm like going around asking people for directions thankfully it's in a country where people speak english yeah but I think overall that that task was easier, but just in the moment being like, oh, going mm-hmm. around London, finding three clues yeah. or going to an art studio right here and, and doing some sort of art. Sure. By the way, I'm and you know, you people never... did, some people didn't know what Big Ben looked like. <laughs> it's a clock. <laughs> yeah. Somebody thought St. Peter's or it wasn't St. Peter's. It's like some chapel. This like, wasn't it some like, it was chapel? Westminster like Abbey or yeah, something. Was, yeah, Anyways, know. we obviously don't know. Yeah, either, I'm but... not saying I just know what Big Ben is and it's a clock. <laughs> It's a very big tar clock. Anyways. Um, but yeah, we would pick, I definitely would pick the art one as well. But the question is, when we get to the art one, would we have known it was a puzzle and not yes. just paste it randomly on the wall? Yes. I, I feel like I would have known. I feel like I would have not known. I'd be like, Mary, what do you think? And then you would have had to tell me. Cause Probably. I'd be like, I, what is this? <laughs> but then you're good at puzzles. Like, I like puzzles. Mary and I will do a puzzle. Like I have the Once Upon an Island puzzle that you can get on Patreon, by the way. That wasn't meant to be a plug, but now it is. Uh, I have the Once Upon an Island puzzle. And Mary did it in like 10 minutes. And it took me 25. And it was the same puzzle. And we were both under no pressure. We just put a t- <laughs> clock on to see how long it would take. And that's it. And so, yeah, you're definitely the puzzle person between the two of us. Okay. So 
After finding after finishing their detour, they have to go find the Queen and Boris Johnson. <laughs> and for a second, I was like, "Did they get the Queen Obviously on not. the Amazing Race? Like that's some pulling some strings." But no, of course, it's actors representing the Queen and Boris Johnson. Why is poor? So, okay, so maybe this is an inside joke. But why is Boris Johnson wearing, or the actor playing Boris Johnson wearing a bike helmet? I don't. know. I know you don't know. I asked you last night because I was confused. I'm like, this has to be some sort of inside joke. I don't know about the only thing i could come up with is that he rides a bike to buckingham palace every day i was but. also thinking maybe his wig wouldn't stay on and so they're like what's a solution we can do let's put, put a, a bike, bike helmet, helmet on, on. There I, are I don't so know many other solutions maybe the wig didn't look that. good if you look at the wig if you <laughs> freeze frame on boris johnson his i mean it's a very obvious blonde wig so i'm just saying maybe they were covering up how bad it looked maybe or that couldn't know. stay on his head maybe <laughs> boris johnson was late to work hmm. And they couldn't, didn't have enough time to put the wig on. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it's just an inside joke and I'm overthinking it. Yeah. I like to think about why things are actually happening and not, and not, I don't know. I try to think like the, the why of how things are made, I guess. My favorite part of seeing the queen and the prime minister was that yeah. when the Holderness family, when I'm going to keep calling them that because I don't remember their name. That's names. okay. Kim and Penn. Yeah. Kim and Penn. When they came, went in there, they were like, <laughs> they just had like a whole conversation with them they're like oh it's so good to see you it's such an honor and they're like what's the secret to living a long life or whatever and the the queen i don't remember if it was the queen or the prime minister was like if you're in a hurry it's okay you can go and like no no i want to sit and talk like to but you. we're just actors we're not the real people <laughs> It Do you was think really Kevin knew this? <laughs> I think so. I think they were just excited. Do you think any team thought actually thought funny? this was the real queen? I possibly. Because a lot of teams here did not know anything about London. <laughs> except for the flight attendants. They they apparently had been there. And of course, Ryan and Dusty. Right. Like everyone else was kind of like. <laughs> I don't know. Not very knowledgeable. Maybe Anthony and Spencer. They do really well. It's like. Um, so the pit stop is at the Natural History Museum, um, which I didn't know they i mean i guess i could have assumed they had a natural history museum it looks pretty big and impressive My it looks just like the 90th museum uh, to <gasps> me but but that was set in america well, it does yeah. kind of look like it just uh, reminded me of it maybe they shot it there i don't know without looking it up that yeah no their natural history museum is impressive mm -hmm. um but i do want to point out that phil did not have anyone standing with him at the i know it was really weird and same thing at the end of the second leg like he has a lady giving him tea or whatever but she's not like welcome to london or mm -hmm. whatever uh, weird. Another creative it's decision like where I'm like, trying new stuff. Yeah, for no reason. I would say half of their, <laughs> but I would say half of their new ideas work, and half their new ideas have not worked. Let's change the graphics back. Let's get somebody standing with Phil at the pit stop. But there's absolutely no reason to. I mean, I do like, but I do like the change, like the professionals, and I mm -hmm. like the backstories, the way they present them. So, yeah. I know the Amazing Race always done backstories. I'm just pointing out that I liked how they did them here. Maybe it's just in contrast to how Survivor botched it last season. So. Um, but I, I'm just saying like half the decisions are good. Half the decisions are like, let's not do this, but you know, we all got to try new things, see if they work, if they don't moving forward. But yeah, the, nobody's saying with Phil is kind of weird. It was weird. By the way, fun fact, since we never podcasted about 32, Amazing Race 32, somebody stole the pit stop mat at one of the legs. Really? Yeah. May, like Phil and the person, <laughs> like the whole crew is just like taking a break. Like waiting for the next team to show up because that's how long in between teams are. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody off the street just stole the pit stop oh mat. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I forgot which leg it was, but it's a fact. I There was an interview and if you watch that leg of the season, you can see the pit stop maps no longer there. They never address it in the show, hmm. but it totally got stolen. So uh, I guess at the Natural History Museum, they're like, this is a safe place. Nobody's going to steal the <laughs> oh mat gosh. inside of here. So yeah. Um, the 1517 to Paris team, Anthony and Spencer get first. Uh, and then they say that I mentioned earlier that they're poor despite being the stars of a $30 million movie mm -hmm. about them. Mm -hmm. They done screwed up mm -hmm. <laughs> somewhere along the lines. They done screwed up with the money they got. <laughs> they done screwed that up not getting enough money. It was one or the other. <laughs> Cause or they're lying to us. Pick one, pick one of the three because I'm like, man, how can you how could you you each should have won a million from that movie <laughs> but it's cool they got to do a bunch of other things though like meeting uh obama and i'm sure they did other things i just they don't... became uh citizens of france They're, that's they a have thing. dual citizenship now oh so they could just travel to france willy-nilly 
yeah i mean they don't have to sneak barring, into france barring covid regulations i don't yeah. know how that works nobody sneaks into france <laughs> i don't know maybe people do but anyways yeah that was kind of cool people are sneaking into france to, to escape all right um so that they win a trip and so initially of course we got to ask because they do not get their trips till the season is done airing mm-hmm. so the season will this season will not be done airing until sometime in february i'm guessing maybe mm-hmm. early march Will they get this trip still that they won? It may not be that exact one, but I'm sure they will. They will still get something of similar I've, value. Same thing with the the last season that f- that aired in 2020. It's like I'm sorry. I feel bad for these teams. First off, the Amazing Race had a rough go these last couple seasons mm-hmm. with with things. With the, the last season didn't air for two years after it was filmed for no good reason, and then this season because of COVID. You know, they had to delay it for a year and a half, like nothing they could do with that. But yeah, I wonder if they're going to get their trips or if they'll just get like a monetary equivalent to the trip because they can't go on it. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Depends on where it's to, I'm sure. Like, but I'm sure that depends on the locations rules about COVID. Yeah. So it's like nobody can come here, period. Okay, well, here's money. Mm-hmm. But if it's like you can come here with the vaccine, they're like, oh, that's up to you. You better have the vaccine then. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure they all need the vaccine to finish this race. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, so they got a trip. Um, basically, I don't have anything else in between that and who gets eliminated. Do you, do you before I say who got eliminated? I have anything um, after them getting first on the leg? Uh, the only thing else that I had was that when the Holder and his family st- got to the mat, Phil was like, good job coming in fourth. You got to keep the old people or something about don't let the young people win everything. Yeah. And, like trying to relate to the to the to them. I'm guessing they're all around the same age. Well, I don't Phil's got to be in his fifties. I want to say at this point, I could see them. And being the Holder's family is like late forties. I looked yeah. it up. They were like forty six, forty seven, something like that. Mm-hmm. So mid to late forties. Um, so I don't know about old people, but on the Amazing Race, that is old because yeah. it's such a physical yeah. thing to take for. T- in fact, I wanted to point out there was no old teams. The oldest person I think I think here is Arun, and he's fifty six. Mm-hmm. Like. If there was a team of 50-something-year-olds, that to me would be an old team on The Amazing Race. Mm -hmm. Like, heck, 50s, 60s, that's old teams. They never win. Right. But there's usually always one. I'm surprised they didn't have one. So, yeah, Michael and Mo, the singing police officers, get eliminated in leg one. And Mm -hmm. we hardly knew ye. Yeah. But they did a little song in their exit interview and it was super cute. They're actually pretty good singers. Yeah. I would say, for those who are newer to The Amazing Race, uh, really the teams that you're going to get to know the best... And not just, and I don't, I don't mean like because the edit will focus on them or anything like that. I just mean like will be the teams that make the last like four or five episodes. Like those are teams you'll just naturally get to know the best because as teams get eliminated, there's just more time to show yeah. those teams. So like right now, it's like eleven teams. You got to cut between all of them all the time, and like so we get little snippets. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, we're gonna learn whoever ends up being like final five or six. That's really the teams we'll get to know the best. So yeah, Michael Mo hardly knew ye, but fun you get to go to london you got to go to london for free mm-hmm. so and phil had this whole emotional speech he gave them like it almost looked like he was tearing up just <laughs> saying like you're my winner <laughs> <laughs> no just saying how you know he's super proud of them and their jobs are super important and it was cute i'm saying jeff maybe maybe jeff's trying to like channel his inner phil but like he's, he's not, not phil. phil he's not phil and that's okay <laughs> phil is naturally an encouraging nice person and jeff's a smart alec <laughs> it's okay to be yourself <laughs> all right um and that's one point that i like we enjoy phil's upbeat attitude it's a little weird on tough as nails doesn't feel like it's appropriate for that show but here for the amazing race it works mm-hmm. yeah like phil doesn't want to eliminate you even though he's like an executive producer of the show and he made it <laughs> but he doesn't want to eliminate you he has to so anyways all right so they stay in london for like two i thought that was a weird choice usually like two they go somewhere else they don't like usually when they stay in a location my recollection is usually like like three, four, five, like somewhere in the middle of the race. They'll like do a location back to back times. But here, no, London back to back. Yeah. And I'm OK with it. London's fun. I like London. Yeah. London's a great location. Um, Sometimes. Yeah. I had nothing else. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say sometimes about. It. OK. So their first task, they have to go to a mail rail car. I want to say that correctly. A mail rail car. It's mm-hmm. like an underground mail car the heck i didn't know about this that's pretty cool yeah i I know one of our questions in our question sections like do americans really know this a little about london yes apparently i didn't know there's a mail car that was underground here in america people just drive the cars to the mailboxes and drop off mail 
and like the the mail might travel on a truck or on a plane, but there's no underground mail cars here. Well, that I know of. There might be in bigger cities. I guess you we think don't New York? Know. No, the New York has like subways. Like where? Well, London has subways too. Oh my gosh! Yeah, mate. Okay, so I can only speak for, for my knowledge of America. Do Americans know America? No. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much America. How can I keep up? Okay, so Anthony and Spencer are the first ones out of the pit stop. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to hail a cab. And none of the cabs are pulling over because I guess... What, what was it again, Mary? What, what was going on? Well, they didn't really say. But it was very early in the morning. So you said that maybe it was like a shift change or something. Like yeah. the night drivers were all going home. And I don't know, day drivers. Like they're trying to hail yeah. the, like cabs that were no longer working. Yeah, they didn't have their lights on. And they said that. And, none and of the you cabs said they're highly seen. trained. So they're probably are very strict about their... Hours? Like it's not like, oh, I'm going to get some extra money doing... Right. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, they seem to be having a hard time of yeah, finding somebody. No one else was so. shown having trouble. It was just them. Mm-hmm. Just Anthony and Spencer, which was, I don't know, kind of a kind of a weird thing to happen. But yeah, I, only thing I can assume is there's a shift change. Did they show the starting times for everybody leaving the leg? If they did, I didn't catch that. Hmm. I have to go I back and remember. watch it. Yeah. They always, they usually do. Because that lets you know, even if you don't look at it, if you wanted to, you could see like, okay, first place team left at 1 p.m. Second place team left at 1.15. It's like, okay, so when they finished the last leg, they were 15 minutes apart. Mm-hmm. And it always lets you know how close teams really are. Because right. the Amazing Race loves to edit that the finishes are closer than they really are most of the time. When there's a legit close finish, it's exciting because you're like, oh, Amazing Race doesn't need to trick me with its editing. I'm seeing both teams together racing to the same location or racing to the same pit stop. So, yeah. Yeah, anyways, I didn't. If they did that, I just didn't catch it. If they dropped it, I sh- sure hope they bring it back because that would be a shame. Okay, so anyways, the underground mail car roadblock is so simple. Like, we watched it, and I'm like, oh, you don't have to go through any of the boxes or anything? Because basically, they have to go down there and get a clue that's, like, hidden amongst, like, ten letters. And they try to change the color of it and everything. I think Phil even says something like, they have to search through thousands of of packages of mail or whatever. And I'm like... There was barely 50 things in each one of their boxes. Now, if they actually had to go into the boxes or whatever and go through all those, then yeah, it would have been. But it's like... Or open all the letters. Amazing. Whoever hit the clue is just like, I'll just throw it on the bottom. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like... (laughs) I think one girl said she found it in like 15 seconds or something. Yeah. That was Raquel and Kayla. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to take notice of them. If they're they're going to nail... People nail tasks and and don't question whether they did it right or not, they're going to go far in this Mm -hmm. race. You can't sit there and double double guess yourself and everything second guess yourself and yeah because as we learned from two other teams what the heck were they doing they found the clue and they're like this must be a trick <laughs> like <laughs> they're have gonna they ever watch this questions show? about the packages or the stamps <laughs> or the addressees and it's just like really if you I have there, the clue the only thing i would have thought of if i were there i'd been like mm. well the color's different of the thing but that's the only thing that's different it's not like it's this is still the clue yeah like, it's still in the same envelope it's like it doesn't say it doesn't say Big Brother on it. Like mm-hmm. it says Amazing Race. Like what are right. we? So it okay. So as a hypothetical team, Mary, which one of us would have done this roadblock? Hearing that you had to go search and stuff, I would have probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. If there's ever a heights challenge, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> but no, for this one, I definitely would have sent you down there. You'd have found it. Hopefully, you just found it like Raquel and Kayla. Fifteen seconds. Get back on the same train you got there on and left. Mm-hmm. But if you're like the Holderness family, or I want to say it was it taylor and isaiah i want no it was uh because remember caro fought with them at, uh, so it was, it was ray, Island, Caro and ray yeah it was ray that they both were like no this is too easy we have to go through everything maybe we have to put the letters in alphabetical <laughs> order maybe it's by where they're sent from and i'm like what <laughs> read your clue so for those who are newer to the amazing race two basic things like survivor where survivors always uh survivors basic rules are like uh, always learn how to make fire before you get on the show and the other one is, uh, there's other things. I top my head. I'm sorry. I'm tripping here on what some basic survivor rules are. I would say one is like if nobody's talking to you before travel council, you're probably going. Mm-hmm. Like that's like a, almost like a golden rule at this point. Like it's gonna happen. Um, and Jeff's gonna throw dumb twists at you. Here, it's Amazing Race doesn't throw dumb twists at you. Like you will know when it's coming way ahead of time. Like yeah, usually they're like this leg's a double elimination. They tell you at the beginning mm-hmm. of the leg or they're like this leg, there's a U-turn at the beginning of the leg. Mm-hmm. They never like do twists. So to sit there and assume that you need to do some other task that the clue to always read your clue. Yeah. Always. Whatever the clue, the clue says, all what the do. information. You need. Yes. Uh, every time it always has all the information you need. It's never a trick. 
Maze Race is not here to trick you. They want you to be successful so that they can move along too. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's cameramen who are following you. And like, if you're running around the streets of London, they're running right there with you, which is so crazy. And the sound guy too, apparently. So yeah. crazy. So anyways. All right. Um, yeah. Raquel finds hers in 15 seconds. Two teams, though, they stay and they, they estimate they're there for 30 minutes. And a tr- so a train comes yeah. and leaves and they don't get on it. Another train comes Basically, their train, and leaves and their they train don't get comes, on it. Their train comes, drops them off. And Raquel as well. Raquel's like, got it, leaves. And they're mm-hmm. like, what was that? And they so they missed their own train that they could have got on. The initial one that dropped them off. Train comes, like you said. They don't get on it. So it drops off other teams. Drops off another team. Yeah, drops off another team. Then oh. another train comes. I don't think they get on that one either. I think they yeah, literally think, missed two trains. Yeah, I think so. After they get dropped off. And then the third train where they're like, what? Because everyone else yeah, finally shows from that, up. From the other train. Yeah, everyone else is, is there basically. I think there might be one or two tr- teams left behind. But like the majority of the teams are there. And mm-hmm. they all just run over, grab their tickets and go stand by the train yeah. tracks. And they're like, what are they well, doing? Well, that can't be that easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, okay, clearly two of these teams have never watched this show before is what I think. Hopefully in the year and a half gap between these two, uh, the leg three and leg four, these teams watch The Amazing Race and learn more. T- I, I hope leg four, like all of a sudden we see like teams in shape and teams that have have like now watched every season and like are raid. Like it's going to be like, it should be intense. The, the change from three to four should be intense. That's we'll what I'm see. saying. We'll see. I'm sure. Well, apparently Phil says some teams didn't even learn how to six shift, six shift still. Just go rent a car from a rental place and ruin their car. Anyways, just to, that's just a quick tip for you. Okay, then the next thing is a detour. You either can you either gotta like basically between the two of you throw six darts and get two bullseyes, or decorate two cakes with flags from the European Union. Mm-hmm. And I looked up the European Union, and there's a lot of countries. But I gotta say, England not being in it threw me off as well mm-hmm. as it did for other teams. But okay, so we're presented with this opportunity, Mary. Which one would, would we pick? I would say cakes because I'm not good at darts. That's true. But and I don't think I'm good enough to get two bullseyes and three throws. They were really close to the dartboard though. But you don't know that when you're going in. If it was not you, I'm, I'm saying that I could have, if they gave me six throws, I think I could have done it. But if I only get three of our six throws, mm-hmm. I don't know if I, if, if I, I don't know. But it's so clear. Like everyone who did the bullseye like was out faster, even right. if it took them four quote unquote a forever. long time because you just keep getting to redo your shots like there's, you don't have to wait in a line for anybody right. else to go because i don't think they tell you in the cakes that it's it you you have to pick which ones are still in yeah the and it's kind of a time you don't know it's not a hard task yeah. it's just time consuming yeah it was very time consuming because the first i would say like the first few teams doing the cake cakes were trying to guess which countries are in the european union mm-hmm. turns out norway's not in either that threw me off as well mm-hmm. um but uh, by the by, the second half of the teams that did it, it was France, Germany, France, Germany. Everyone's just copying each other. Right. It became kind of sort of uninteresting with how funny it, or how f- funny how uninteresting their choices were. But it makes sense, like strategically, just pick the ones that work. Right. Like, I'm not here to like pick the fun team, the fun countries, or whatever. Right. But when I looked up how many countries there were, I was kind of surprised. But yeah, they definitely throw you off making thinking that because th- Raquel and Kayla do the UK mm-hmm. or do uh, England, and they nope, that is not. Not the not they're not. I think they're not part of Brexit. Is that what it was? Brexit was the deal where they oh. Britain exited the EU. So somebody so on our questions Brexit. asked, "How much do Americans <laughs> Americans know about <laughs> London?" <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, so we would have chose the cakes. Hopefully, we would have known two countries in the European Union. I would have guessed France as well. Yeah, I don't know which ones would have caught my eye, but I do think I would have mistakenly done the. Done if we England. were there first, I'm sure we would have. We, if we were able to copy. We would. I would have probably done England and, and France, just like the Anthony and Spencer did. I think. So, or whoever did England and France. Okay. So then we get. Uh, okay, so I, I forgot which team was asking Arun and Italia, but they were like, "Are you?" Oh, I think it was Caro and Ray. They're like, "Hey, are you going to this task?" And they're like, "No, we're going to their task." And they're like, "Ah, oh, I can't find it." And he's like, good luck. Hope you don't find it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and I'm like, this should have been the name of the episode. Good luck. Hope you don't find it. Or maybe it was. I didn't look it up. Uh, but basically, the pit stop for this leg is a double-decker bus where everyone gets tea. For the yeah, pit stop. so fun. I loved it. So I was kind of wondering, since the leg just continues to Scotland. I for, Well, at first, I didn't know that. I don't think mm-hmm. we were told that until the last team shows up. Yeah. Though all the teams, of course, are told that when they show up. Mm-hmm. Not that 
we're the only ones left out of the loop in this case. Originally, I was like, are they all just on top of the double decker bus waiting for the all the teams to check in? Like, is that their pit stop? That's weird because pit stops are usually like a place where they get to sleep and stuff. Right. But no, it turns out it's just like a continue. We're just continuing the leg going to Scotland. So, yeah. Um, you, do you have anything else before I tell say who got first and who got last? No, that's pretty much it. Okay, well, uh, first place team was Ryan and Dusty. And, oh, no, well, after Ryan and Dusty gets first, I, I mentioned everyone does France and Germany by, like, the end of the task, of mm-hmm. the cake task. Everyone who did darts, even if they took forever, were still out of their, like, top half of the yeah. teams. So, uh, so there's a team named Lulu and Lala, and I want to mention that our puppy's name is Lulu, and it was very confusing for a moment. It was so confusing. We had no idea who was on the TV and who was cuddled next to us on the couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was that. I was so confused. I was like, "Is this the Lulu of the Amazing Race?" Um, <laughs> but no, she brings up how she has ex issues, and I'm like, "This is random." Like with her ex boyfriend. Do you remember what it was? Oh yeah, because they're decorating the cake, and they're the last ones at the cake shop, and she goes. My ex said that I would get on here and that I wouldn't make it. And he was right. And now that's all I'm thinking about. And then her sister is all like mad at her. Well, one for thinking about her ex-boyfriend, but two mm-hmm. just being so discouraged and despondent. Yeah. Because you don't, you never know what's going to happen and you have to have a positive attitude. So, but yeah, that was like their whole big deal is she was mad at her about bringing up her ex. And then she's like, basically being a negative Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. But then, but then in her defense, I don't remember which one it was, but basically she said, well, you're, you're constantly telling me I need to express my feelings and be honest with you about what's going on in my yeah. life. And I'm just trying to, and then you shut me down. She's so, like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they had a little moment and yeah. they worked it out, but well, I thought it was random. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm like, they're about to get eliminated after she says this. I'm like, what a downer. Cause they're clearly the last place team at this yeah. point, but no, they get to the, uh, double decker bus and they're not eliminated nope. no elimination like two nope it was um, it was like one of those legs where it's a continuation of the leg yeah so the, the when we say it's they never trick you it's because the amazing race the only time they're like they do a quote-unquote gotcha i guess is hey the legs continuing mm-hmm. but it's not it's not like a trick and like it's it's not that they didn't get eliminated it's just that the leg didn't the leg's not done the leg hasn't finished the leg yet. hasn't finished mm-hmm. Which is a different way. I know because the episode ends, you think that's the end of the leg. No, it's actually technically a continuation of the leg when they go into episode three now. Um, so yeah, Lulu and Lala were the last to check in with Phil, but they are still in the race. Mm-hmm. So that's where we stand after two legs. Uh, so now we have one episode t- next week. That is the last episode of the shop for COVID. So I'm guessing it will end with Phil telling them. I'm sure it's not like midway through the leg. I'm hoping. I'm- yeah, they looked like they were at the mat. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's at the end of the leg. There are feels like, hey, we have to shut down production, <laughs> which sucks for everyone, yeah. especially us. So year and a half gap. I definitely want to. I mean, we won't be really be able to talk about it until episode four. But like, I wonder what improvements teams will make. Mm-hmm. Like, what things will they change? Like, because it's so hard to predict because we're about to do loser predictions and winner predictions. But it's like we can only predict through episode three accurately because. I don't know what changes in a year and a half. Right. You know, usually Amazing Race doesn't have a gap in between the two. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So that's it for the breakdown. Unless you have anything else, Mary? No. Okay. Um, well, I do want to mention one other thing before we talk about loser picks. Uh, let's pray for no game ruining alliances like in 32. So you keep saying that. And honestly, I just don't remember that they being that big of a deal. They ruined season 32, the second half of that season with their stupid alliance. Do you not remember this? No. Oh, it was so boring because they were just like, like it's alliances are great in Survivor, but in the Amazing Race, like they're supposed to be like a temporary thing. Like we're temporarily aligning, but screw you. <laughs> it's usually how it works. How do you not remember this? It's been a, while, a long time. You're honestly. supposed to be the more hardcore fan. No, I enjoy <laughs> watching. It doesn't mean I have any statistics memorized ah, or anything. Okay. No, I just remember the game running alliance. Um. So anyways, let's move on to our loser picks. This is basically Mary and I trying to predict who will be eliminated next. Mm-hmm. And so since there's so many teams right now, I'll allow two teams to be presented as loser two. picks. So Mary, who are your two teams that you think could be gone next? Well, based on their track record, I would say Lulu and Lala, the mm-hmm. twins, because they finished 10th both t- both legs. Um, they just, I don't know, don't seem to quite have it together as far as just being organized and logical about things i don't know they're just not not a very strong team right now if i had to pick another one i would probably say the educator team um sherry and akbar 
Yeah. Just because they're a bit out of shape. They're a bit out of shape and they're older. Um, but they have a lot of heart. So I don't know. Th- those would be my top two that I would look to see be gotten next week. Not bad picks at all. And uh, as we mentioned, I mean, all, through episode three, only one team can be eliminated. So we have two loser picks. But let's say one of these teams that we present does get eliminated. The other team has the opportunity to, or both teams, because things happen all the time where it's like we get a bad cab driver. Yeah. We can't drive a stick shift. We mm-hmm. do a task wrong. We can't figure out why. You can get eliminated for a variety of reasons. This is just our predictions based on what we saw over the course of basically two episodes. So. Right. Um, my, I'm in agreement with you. I think Lulu and Lala. Fact of the matter is they, they finished 10th in both legs and 10th mm-hmm. was actually last place in second leg. And they, so they're next to last in the first leg. Mm-hmm. Like that is consistently bad. Mm-hmm. People have been consistently bad and still gone to win the race because they just didn't get eliminated because they happened to finish like last on the leg that was a non-elimination. Mm-hmm. So good on them. But Lula Lala, I don't get that sense. But if they can survive through like three, maybe they can get their act together. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, my other team is not, I don't agree with you. I mean, I, I, I understand your, what you're saying. My second pick is not the same as yours. My second pick for last place is Taylor and Isaiah. And let me pull up why. I have to pull up the Amazing Race wiki real quick. Um, the reason is because it's almost like under the radar, but they finished eighth and then they finished ninth. Hmm. So they finished like, what's that? Uh, not, they finished basically bottom in the first leg. And then the second leg, they finished next to last. And that's consistently on the down. Mm-hmm. And there was there was not much luck involved. Like there wasn't like it wasn't like bad cab drivers or like once you once you do bad back to back in the first two legs, I feel like this is just this is what you are. If there was no luck involved, it could just be warming up. Could just be warming up though, as we mentioned. Yeah, teams have started off slow and won. So that's our loser picks for now. Not that we have anything against them. We just don't think they're going to last long. Mm-hmm. Okay, now on to our winner picks. So unlike Survivor, there is no winner edit in The Amazing Race. You're not looking for clues. You can't try to read the edit. I mean, you can. You can try. And it, Amazing Race will randomly, and I do mean random, <laughs> throw in winner quotes. Or like, huh, that's something a winner would do. But like, it's not consistent. It's not like Survivor where they're consistently telling a story that like has the winner as yeah. a, a, either an important figure or a, hey, if you pay attention, they're the winner. Um, Amazing Race really doesn't do winner like winner hints until like the usually until like the last few episodes of the mm-hmm. season. So like we get like four episodes left, you'll start noticing winner winner hints. Um, is my I mean I'm not like an expert here. It's just my what I've noticed when I watch seasons where I already know who's gonna win. So uh, let's start off. So this so just to let you know this is not like uh, we we don't have like some super expert opinion. This is just based on what we've seen over two legs. We mm-hmm. have no there's no like oh this is a winner hint so. Who is your number one team to win, Mary, right now? Who is like you think this team is going to win? So if you had to guess. If I had to guess, I really think one of the strongest teams that we've got is Ryan and Dusty. Um, I don't know. I, they just seem to have everything together. They seem confident under pressure. They're pretty positive most of the time. Um so I have them probably in one of my top two. I think I'm in agreement with you. That's also my number one, I wanted to say. Yeah. And it's because they finished the first leg in second and the second leg in first. And it's like, we just talked about people having slow starts. Mm-hmm. Now, you can have a fast start and then burn out. Yeah. You can go, Rob and Amber in season 11 got first the first like four legs or first like three or four legs and then they burnt on the last leg. Right. So you can have a strong start and then get killed. So yeah. it's not indication that you're going to win. but. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. Who's your second pick? So my second pick is actually the Holderness family. Only because a lot of times when you do, they've been middle of the pack so far. Yeah. Um, But I think something that they have that is really strong is they do seem to be positive all the time. No Mm -hmm. matter, even when he made like that big mistake and stayed down and kept searching through the packages or whatever. Like they just kind of laughed it off and moved on. Yeah. And it versus the other team had a big fight about it. So the ability to handle stress like that and, and just have that experience of being like, Hey, we're a team. We're going to move forward. It's going to be okay. Just having that kind of attitude can get you a lot farther than you would think. Also, especially they in this the race. Top half of all teams. They finished both legs. Mm, both legs they finished in the top half. It was so fourth and fifth. They're a strong team. Yeah. They're a little bit older. I just think that they have the mental fortitude um to get through it yeah and i originally i mean after the first leg i was like maybe anthony and spencer are going to be real contenders here 
But them getting seventh on the second leg, once again, not much luck involved in these legs. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like cab drivers and stuff that could really screw you up as much. Um, Made me think, okay, maybe they're a little more inconsistent. So I can't really say whether. So my second pick is actually going to be Raquel and Kayla. Because what I'm looking for personally is consistency. Mm -hmm. And they finished, let me take a look here, third and fourth. Kind of like Kim and Penn being consistent in the top half. Mm -hmm. Those consistent top half teams usually are contenders. Can they? Can Kim and Penn or Raquel and Kayla break out and win a leg? Though that's the question. You have to win. A, you have to win a leg to win the amazing well, race. Yes. So that's the question: Is can they win? Can they win a leg? I so, think they can. I think that they're. I think that they're in the right age bracket to be winners, mm-hmm. and they seem to work well together. And if they can have any flight attendant experience in the places that they're going, then that would be good. Kind of like they did here. Like, oh, I was just here two weeks ago. Yeah. It's like, will this come up again? Who knows? So. That's our winter picks. We'll mm-hmm. see what happens next week. We next week it's at I think it says at nine p.m. Eastern. Is it? I looked it up at the CBS schedule uh, this morning, so that could I guess that could change. Nothing's official, um, but I think it's at nine p.m. because they have Price is Right night special at eight p.m. Oh, I know what <laughs> <laughs> I'm agreeing with you there. So let's do the move on to our questions, and let me pull this up real quick here on YouTube. Every week after the episode's done, I will make a YouTube post asking you all for your questions. So if you want your questions answered, uh, Amazing Race is probably your better opportunity than Survivor. Because Survivor, get like 100 questions. Amazing Race, like 20. So if you've ever like just dying to have your question answered, <laughs> the Amazing Race is the time to ask it, I guess. All right. So let me pull these up. I dropped my phone. Okay. All right. First question is from Electric Enzo. Do you think any teams will become villains this season? We all, we, if so, we usually have some villain teams. I mean, so far have we had a villain or, team? In this episode, or I, I haven't noticed. No one's been outstandingly like backstabbing or something. Is there the possibility? Yeah, I could see it. Who? I'm not yeah. sure yet. And sometimes villains all a matter of perspective. I'd say the winners of Amazing Race 32 were villains to me. Because they ruined the season. <laughs> With their alliance or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Usually in villains just means like intentionally lying to somebody yeah. about a clue or, you know. Sometimes it takes a U-turn for this to happen. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. As of right now, I don't see any teams straight up villainous. My closest guess would be Lulu and Lala because they're in the bottom and they're fighting with each other. Because sometimes villains is just that the villains in their own personal team um, I mean, I just made a video last month called the Amazing Race Family Edition, or sorry, uh, not Family Edition, uh, Blind Rate, Blind Date Edition is a hot mess. And really, it's like Taylor or Haley and Blair were a villain team, but because they're a villain team with each other, not with anyone else. Oh, yeah. They just ruined each other all the time. So, yeah. okay. Uh, Josh Duckworth asks, how do you think the COVID stoppage will affect things? I kind of talked about it a little bit. I kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you're off the race for a year and a half. That's going to affect things. Um, just with production, with the team itself, it's just a huge, like, mental block. So yeah. how do you... And, and the, I don't even know how much notice they had before going back again. So, I mean, obviously they had some notice, but it could have been like, oh, well, things are getting better. Maybe we're going to start soon. Yeah, oh, so they, no, re- they resume filming in September 2021 which is so recent, mm-hmm. um, like what, three, four months ago at most. So yeah, I mean, how does it affect it? Hopefully people watched the show and got in better shape, but also everyone is a year and a half older. So I mean, right. the course of time can take effect on everybody. Uh, and of course, if anyone had COVID recently-ish before the season, like that can like affect your senses. Mm-hmm. Like I lost, geez, taste and smell for a little bit. Uh, smell longer than taste, but yeah. Okay, uh, Chill Town asks, who are you rooting for? I would say personally for me, and it's not because of their how they how well they've been doing. It's Ryan and Dusty because of how fun they are. And that's usually what I'm looking for in our Amazing Race team is yeah. how much fun somebody is. They are is. pretty fun. Who are you rooting for, Mary? The Holderness family. Yeah, you did mention that earlier. Yeah. I've mentioned them a lot. I just yeah. think they're cute and I like them. And they're prematurely gray. How do they do it? How he do they is. do it? <laughs> she isn't really. He is. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question is from Henry Rutherford Braun. Do all Americans know that little about England? <laughs> Henry, I've been thinking about your question the entire time we've been recording this episode, in case you yes. haven't noticed. Uh, the answer is yes. Though I do know what Big Ben is. Yeah, and I know what Bobby's are. <laughs> I know what Buckingham Palace looks like, but I have not been to London. So it's like, uh, yeah, we just we don't know that much. And our last question is, Kevin Ray asked, did they ban alliances? 
Did they ban? Can you ban alliances? I don't. They could have done. They could have told them before the race began. Like they'll like, get penalized or something. I don't know. I. I. It's not that alliances are bad. It's that. When they're doing the task, the alliances can just give you the answer and you don't really have to do the task. That's mm-hmm. where my issue comes in. Mm-hmm. Has nothing to do with alliances outside of tasks. Just right. within tasks, they need to get rid of like allowing people to give answers to each other. So if they have, we don't know about it. If they have, they haven't told us. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, remember that the the season did not air until after they fought, shot these first three legs. So we could find that out in like four mm-hmm. if it comes up at all. Right. Because yeah. So anyways, that's all we have for the Amazing Race 33 premiere. Next week's uh, podcast will be shorter. Obviously, we have only one episode to talk about. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. How about you, Mary? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Every Friday, we'll be here doing this until, I, I mean, I don't know if Survivor and this will overlap. I imagine this will probably end the week before Survivor, but we'll see. Survivor's not back till March 9th, so who knows? <laughs> all right, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.